Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do a painting of a location that's really close to my home. It's Scudic Point in Acadia National Park, and we're gonna work with watercolor on watercolor paper. And I'm sketching this out with a graphitant pencil, which is a water-soluble tinted graphite. And you can find the real-time version of this lesson in Critique Club. I'll put a link in the video description in case you wanna check that out. So I decided that I wanted to do a panoramic of this scene because I actually took a uh, I took two pictures from the same spot on that beach and I thought well perfect because I could make a really long composition here and I rarely ever do that and I didn't even think of it when I was taking the picture so I was really surprised happily when I found that on my um, in my photos when I was looking back at them the next day so I'm just doing a loose sketch I want to get some water in I want to get some of the tree line and some of the um, rocky coast in the background there are tons of rocks in this picture and actually most of the pictures I took I think were of rocks and waves. I just love to paint rocks. Now I'm going to be using these Viviva color sheets and what they are, um, they're kind of like an ink on a flat sheet of paper basically. And, um, you get this palette, this little booklet that has 20 colors and, um, I will link this down below because they just came out with some sketchbooks to kind of coincide with Inktober because those uh, those color sheets, those watercolor sheets are actually more of like an ink than a watercolor. Uh, so it was kind of um, put together as a way for people to prepare for the challenge. And uh, the neat thing about this was that they added white for the first time with their color sheets because I've been using these for a few years and they're just kind of nifty. You can tuck them away so small inside of a sketchbook or something. So I decided to try out that white ink and put some faraway clouds that were kind of purplish. So I mixed up some purpley color and I put that in there too. Um, I'm just experimenting here because I haven't really used this paper much. It's an unusual watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton and it has kind of a warm oatmeal type color to it. And I love warm natural toned papers. Um, like when I use Arches and Fabriano, I usually go for the natural tone, not the bright bleached white. I like that warmer tone. So this is even a, like a shade kind of warmer. Um, I like the paper a lot. My one, my biggest complaint with this paper would be that it's very softly sized, it, which didn't affect the painting. But what happened was when I went to remove my tape, cause I used, um, I tried washi tape on another page. You can kind of see some sticking out from a previous page in the book and it was tearing the paper bad. So I thought if I used cellophane tape, just like scotch tape, on the edges here of this landscape that I wouldn't have an issue, but at the end it did tear the paper at the edges. It wasn't a huge deal, but um, but I definitely want to warn you if you are looking at these sketchbooks to, if you buy them, don't use tape in them. Um, use clips or something if you need to clip your paper down, or if that's something that you absolutely want to be able to tape your edges or use masking tape for masking techniques, it's just not going to work with this. I haven't used masking fluid on this paper, but I have a feeling that the results might be similar, but I'd have to try that before I could say one way or the other. Now I'm really having a fun time with these rocks. I'm using um, this, uh, there's this color called slate gray in the Viviva color sheets. And it's like, um, well, it's kind of like a Payne's gray, but it almost, um, it almost splits and breaks up kind of like what an elegant writer will do. If you sketch with an elegant writer pen and then you add water to it, you get those splits of colors. I feel like that's what that slate gray in the Viviva color sheets does as well. Um, it's kind of exciting and fun to use because it is a little bit more flowy and unpredictable compared to watercolor. Uh, and it's just kind of fun to experiment with products that you're not used to using that frequently. I'll have to try watercolor on this book too and see how that goes. But um, as far as the ink, it did perform well in this paper. Downside though, when I flipped and I looked at the page adjacent to it, luckily I didn't have anything on the back sides of either of these papers. Since I used a lot of water and a lot of that ink uh, or, you know, color sheet color, it did bleed through to the back a little bit. So that would be really frustrating if I had painted something on the back side. I don't think it would do that on a typical watercolor paper or your regular watercolor paper, but for this, it did kind of like how an alcohol marker would not that bad, but it definitely bled through. So it's just something to consider if you're going to use your uh, paper really wet probably don't plan on painting on the back side of something or don't paint on the back side of something that you really like because it might end up getting altered by the time you're done your other picture. Now I'm slapping in some sap green just to kind of give a block out some mossy, not moss, it's a seaweed that's on the rocks. And, um, 
I'm also using that color with a big flat brush to do some uh, trees, some evergreen trees. And after I get the sap green down, I'm dropping in some of the, um, I'm using different colors. I'm using some of the ink blue. I'm using some of the slate gray uh, because it doesn't, doesn't, it definitely has more of like a um, kind of an inky blue feeling to it. Or, or tone to it. And I just basically want to vary the trees a little bit because there are some dynamic shadows, they're further away. So I want them to be a little bit more silhouetted. And it's such a bright day that um, the contrast of the trees to the sky, you don't have like super saturated bright colors there. When you have a really bright midday, it does tend to wash out a lot of, um, a lot of tones so you want to kind of keep that in mind but the nice thing about it though is it really lit up all my rocks and i love to paint landscapes with lots of rocks in them so it made the rocks really interesting and it gave some really harsh shadows um that would you know it just brought out a lot of the color and texture of the rocks that you wouldn't necessarily get at you know different times of day if it was late late afternoon which would make you know people look really good the rocks might just get completely washed out because it wouldn't be enough light to bring out everything. Now I'm playing with uh, actually some white gouache that was left over from another project that was on my palette and adding some highlights to these very, very light rocks in the distance. And the brush I'm using is a, a firmer brush. It's more like a ta golden tacklon brush than my typical watercolor brushes. So it's got a little more push to it. And the reason I like that when I'm using gouache, especially if it's dried out on my palette, is that um, it can really pick up the color, can really push it around and leave nice crisp um, textured marks. When I want to retain a brush stroke using a firmer brush like a golden tacklon, like these Zen All Media brushes, just keeps that edge a little bit better. That's really nice when you're doing rocks that are like a little further away, so you're seeing more, almost like um, little blocks and specks of color. It helps you get that effect. And I find also that when you're doing rocks, and here you can see I'm sketching in some just kind of a loose abstract rocks with a, a, a warm brown uh, graphite pencil. When you do that, when you switch brushes and you switch the size of brushes as you're doing rocks, it can help you keep a little more random because I think the issue that a lot of students have when they're painting rocks is that they want to paint a rock and they want it to look like a rock. But when you're painting rocks, you're not just painting a rock, you're more painting the grouping of rocks. It's like the, the collective rocks as a whole, it has more impact than just a single boulder or stone or pebble. So you want to treat that kind of like a mass of rocks. Treat it like one being that has shadows and highlights and cracks and fractures and um, levels. And it's a you can get a more complex look that way. And um, it also adds a cohesiveness rather than painting one rock, then moving on to the next rock because you get too fussy and um, wound up in the details and then you end up with something that doesn't look like rocks. It looks like something very fussy and planned out and contrived. But if you kind of treat it like a mass of rocks and almost like an abstract, um, an abstract being or an abstract um, chunk of shapes and patterns and colors, you're going to get something that looks like rocks. I know it sounds crazy. To paint rocks, you need to not paint rocks. Basically, you need to be one with the rocks. I don't know, but don't try to paint a rock. Just try to paint the planes of light and the uh, chunks of shadow and it will turn out like rocks. You just got to trust yourself. It's going to look messy and it's going to look weird and very abstract before you're done. But when it's done, you'll have rocks. Just trust me. Just, just practice. It's fun. Now, I wanted to get some nice bright white in the water, and I knew the ink from the Viviva color sheets was not going to cut it. So I'm using my white gel pen to add some of the thready swirls in the waves. Because you know how the, the, the surf crashes in and out? When the, um, when the water's being pulled back, you, it leaves all these wispy threads of, of uh, foam. And you want to, the best way to capture that, I think, is either with masking fluid before you begin. Like I said, I don't think masking fluid is going to work great on this paper, uh, or by going in with a white gel pen. And I like the gel pen versus a paint pen for that. Now here I'm using a felt tip white paint pen because I know that it's going to put out a thinner consistency of paint. And what it's going to do is it's going to let some of those colors underneath seep up into them because I wanted to get the look of barnacles on some of these rocks that were just kind of getting lapped by the waves. And if I did a gel pen for that, the, the spots of light would be too bright and they'd be too small. So by using that felt tip pen, it's going to work a lot better. You could take a Q-tip or if you had a little foam dotter or something, that would work too. Just something that's going to give you that small shape. 
Now I needed to, I used a piece of paper with a little mark on it to check my horizon. So I'm like, that doesn't look straight. So what I did was I basically lined up a piece of paper and made a mark on it on one end of the horizon and did the same on the other side to see where I was off. And then I just went in with some inky uh, ink. I think it was actually the color ink. And I put those, that darker water back there. And I was pretty happy with the way it with the way it came out. I really enjoyed working on this because I ended up putting a lot of layers down, even though it's just kind of really thin layers like ink and a little bit of gouache, a little bit of pen. I really liked the way I was able to build up the colors and come up with this really richly vibrant picture. Um, I think sometimes you can capture the feeling of being somewhere when you paint, if, if it's someplace you've been recently. And I feel like I did here because it was just very, um, it was a beautiful day, the surface crashing, you know, everything was just nice. I was relaxed with my family. It was just a nice day. And, um, and it's nice to capture those things on paper while they're fresh in your mind. Uh, I'm using a little bit of a black pen to go in and add some really deep shadows because the dark um, watercolor ink was not quite cutting it for me. So this is a Jane Davenport um, it's called License to Quill Pen. It's a really wonderful brush tip pen. She also has one that's got like fish scales on it that almost seems identical in feel, but um, I really love the ink on this. It's not an expensive pen. I think you can get it at Michael's for about $5, but the uh, ink is waterproof. So if I decide I want to go over any of this, it's not gonna smear, which I really like. And it's pretty comfortable to hold, even though it looks kind of um, kind of funny. It's, it's shaped like a, a quill, like a feather quill. Um, her products are very cute and very um, whimsical and fun to use. So if you like that sort of thing, they, a lot of them kind of look like makeup too, like an eye pen or something. Um, so if you don't mind that or if you like that, then definitely give it a give it a look. Now this is the white gouache that I probably prefer over all white gouaches. It is the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. It is the most opaque white gouache I have ever used. And gouache is simply an opaque watercolor. Um, you can tint it use a little bit of it, tint it with other colors, and it will, um, you can, you know, tone it down a bit, or you can add water and make it much more translucent, but it is an extremely opaque white. So you can do things like I can dab on the sea spray and get that really, really bright white. I can flick it on with a toothbrush or with a, with a uh, wet brush and give, um, give it like more of a burst of, of speckles, which you'll see me do in a minute. It's, um, it's just a really versatile product. I like it a lot. So I'm gonna do some spraying, like I mentioned, with a toothbrush, and I just used some paper, just torn, to protect areas of my painting so I didn't overspray. And I'll put my thumb over like a rock or something just to keep from, from uh, having it go too far. And then I just use a brush to drag out some of the speckles so I can integrate it into those thready wisps that I did with a pen. Now another technique that I like is to actually, if I'm using water-soluble pencils, um, I will take a brush and I will dip it in water and I will lift the color off the tip of the pencil and I'll use that to add in shadows or just a little bit of subtle tone here and there. Um, the Graffitin pencils are very subtle. They're not going to be bold like the Viviva color sheets, but I wanted those things in the background like that, that pile of really light rocks to be much lighter. I can also scribble that pencil off on that little dish that I have. I got that at the Dollar Tree. It's meant for like holding rings and things, but it's got a great texture on it so I can scribble on a watercolor crayon or pastel and make myself a little palette of um, product to use. So if you see something like that or you have something like that in your stash, definitely put it in your art room and, and uh, put it to use there. Um, if it's ceramic, it'll wash, so don't worry. And uh, I'm basically just kind of um, touching things up here and there. I really like the colors in this 20 color set of Aviva color sheets. I'll leave a link to their Indiegogo page because they are uh, doing a um, like a crowdfunding things. They're sending out these different sketchbooks and um, uh, color booklets. You can pick and choose what you like. Uh, and they even have one that's got like a mirror on it so you could trace things from your phone if you don't feel confident about drawing. Um, so I'm giving this a dry and I'm trying to remove the tape and I don't know if you can tell in the time lapse but it is tearing the surface of the paper. Luckily it didn't tear through the paper so it's going to be fine as far as living in my sketchbook but I was kind of disappointed and kind of scared that I was going to ruin my painting because at the edges you can see where it kind of actually tore up some of the painted area. Um, so that was too bad. But overall, I really like the way the painting came out. And if you're curious about this and you would like to see the finished product, check out Critique Club. I'll leave a link down below. It's five bucks a month and you can upload your work from, for a uh, feedback from me and it can help you grow as an artist. So check it out if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. And until next time, happy crafting.